Hello everyone, my name is Jason Parker and welcome back to this channel about Before we get into the reaction, I've got a question for you in today's episode of Random Questions with you and me. Question number three. If you had a million dollars to build anything you wanted, what would you build and why? Comment below. And in today's reaction, we're looking at season seven of Penn and Teller's Fool Us, where in which we will watch Penn and Teller fooling us. Let's go. Penn and Teller usually perform by themselves, but this next trick involves a chunk of our studio audience, a special guest, and one person sitting at home. So here to close the show are Penn, Teller, and a bunch of you. Yeah, a bunch of you. Now, He's like, shut up, we shut are up. All, <laughs> we're all going to do a trick together for one person who's not even here in the theater. So Teller has handed out to 52 of you these envelopes. Now, all of you that are standing up have an envelope. Now, they all look pretty much the same, but in the dot of the question mark, they all have the name of a card. Like this one is the three of clubs. So right now, if you get an envelope, don't open it, but just look in that dot and see what card you have. And this trick is called multiple outs, because really sneaky magicians do this thing where they have multiple endings to the trick they don't know in advance. So one of you will have the card that the person we call selects. If that person picks the card that you have, you keep standing. All the 51 of you that don't have that card will sit down. So we'll have one person who's standing who has the card that is selected. Now, we're gonna call somebody, and to call that person, we have our buddy and star of CW's In the Dark, Rich Summer! <laughs> hey, Rich, how you doing? Hi, man? Very to well, good to see you. You are not going to believe how little you are going to do in this trick. Oh. You're really just picking the person we're going to do it for at home. Okay. Now, I want to I want to make sure this is all out in front. We've already asked you to take your phone, put it on our Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and we've asked you to text a friend and tell them nothing except we're going to do a trick with them, and then we're going to put them up on the screen. Is that right? Uh, he doesn't even know some of that. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> could, could I have your phone, yes, if you will? And who are we Who are we calling? We're going to call uh, my best friend from growing up, Matt. His parents took us to our first Penn & Teller show when we were 13. Oh, so really? Well, 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 why don't you call him? I'll okay. take the phone from you. And okay. then you can just sit down and watch us work. OK. Yeah, they got to do This is Matt here. We're going to call Matt. Uh, hey, Matt, this is Penn, Penn Gillette Penn & Teller. Rich told you that we were going to call, but he might not have told you we are going to put you up on the screen. Do you have pants on? Are you decent? Can <laughs> we put you up on the screen? Sure, yeah. I'm okay, good. Let's put you up on the screen there. And now we're gonna, everybody say hi to Matt. Say hi to Matt. Hi, Matt. Matt, you're up here on our screens here. We're all set to go. They're all looking at you. We're going to do a card trick for you, Matt. And you can name any card you want, but think carefully, because we're going to blow your mind on this. So I don't want you saying later that I manipulated you or I did something or I leaned into something. Really feel like you had a free choice, Matt. Just name any card in a standard deck of 52. All right, all right, all right. Uh, eight of diamonds. Eight of diamonds. OK, no special significance to you, is that right? You just no, not picked at it at random. And where are you right now, Matt? Uh, I'm in the bathroom of my basement. <laughs> <laughs> That's more information I needed. I wondered what state. <laughs> oh, I'm in Minnesota. Minnesota. And you just thought of the eight of you diamonds. Now, we couldn't possibly know that you picked the eight of diamonds, but we set something up for you that I think you're going to find pretty remarkable, Matt. We have one person in the audience who before we called you, we had stand up and gave an envelope to, and that is Karen. We had Karen stand up before we even called you, and we gave her an envelope. Now this is Karen right here. Hello, Karen. Hi. Now please. Hi, Matt. Answer everything completely honestly. Before we even called Matt, we had you stand up. Is that right? Correct. And we gave you that envelope. Yes. And you have not opened it. Is that right? Not open. No. So, Karen, for the first time right now, would you open that envelope? There would be one card in there, one card only. Pull it out. Show it. 
<laughs> I wonder if she just rotated the envelope around because she realized, oh, he shouldn't be seeing that front part where it says the name of the card. And by the way, I haven't made any comments yet. I didn't, I got kind of pulled into Penn's performance, but uh, yeah, that's definitely a thing. This multiple outs that he mentioned, that's definitely a thing in magic. Some tricks rely more heavily on it and it can also be used in other ways. Like if I'm trying to get something to happen and it doesn't happen easily or naturally, then I just immediately redirect to the next thing I want to do. So depending on how things go with me and the spectator, I might be performing effect A or effect B and they don't realize that they don't know that I changed my plan anyways it's actually a very powerful concept back to the performance to Matt please turn it around the eight of diamonds and show you that camera right there the eight of <laughs> diamonds right there Matt the eight of diamonds but you know something Matt you were 13 years old. You went to see Penn and Teller. You went with your buddy Rich. And now you're kind of left out of something that everybody else knows. And I want to bring you up to speed so you're on equal footing with everybody. OK, Matt? Everything Karen said was true, completely true. But we didn't tell you everything. OK. Karen was standing up before the show, but so were 51 other people. People, 51 sat down. If you have an envelope, just hold up the envelope. Hold up the envelope right there. See, they all have envelopes. And if you picked a different card, it would have just been a different person. Like if you'd picked, for instance, the nine of clubs. Stand up. If you picked the nine of clubs, it would have been this person here. And what's your name? Chris. Chris. And I would have asked you, you've been standing up the whole time, and he would have been, because he wouldn't have sat down, and I would have asked if you'd open the envelope, and you would have said no, right? Yeah. And he's telling the truth completely, just like Karen, and then you would have opened the envelope, opened the envelope, Chris, and then, and then read what it says on the one card that's in there, would you please? This is not the chosen card. Wow, Penn and Teller fooled us. It says this is not the chosen card. Oh. Wow, Penn and Teller fooled us. You picked the eight of diamonds, it was Karen, but if you picked the nine of clubs, it wouldn't have been right. It would have been wrong. As a matter of fact, the rest of the 50 of you, would you all open your envelopes, please, right now? There's only one card in each of your envelopes. Would all 50 of you just open up your envelopes <laughs> and pull out the one card that's in there? And would all 50 of you together slowly loudly and in unison please read what it says <laughs> on the one card in your envelope this is not the chosen card wow ben is having fooled us only karen had your chosen card the eight of diamonds <laughs> i think we fooled you matt here's your buddy rich and thank you thank you so much thank rich. you is that too hard work for you no i did it you did a fine job fine job right there thank beautiful you. job thank you Now I guess I'll go ahead and give you my closing thoughts before we hear from Penn and Teller because we're not gonna hear from them. It was their act. All right, so that was actually really cool. I did not expect that twist at the end, which obviously made it magical for us as well, not just the guy on the phone. <laughs> Anyways, that was great. I mean, I just love watching them perform, especially Penn with his big voice. He just kind of fills up the stage and they just keep it moving along like a train, you know? You're just following what's the next thing and it keeps you engaged the whole time. As far as how they did that at the end where everyone else's card was wrong, I didn't really see anything at all. Like, that's very surprising and fooling, very magical. So... Yeah. <laughs> My first thought is that maybe inside of all the envelopes there's some mechanism for hiding the real card and only showing the fake one. But that's kind of absurd and just some really too complicated solution. Besides, with all these people inspecting the envelopes, I'm sure they would notice if one side was like a lot more thick than the other. So... Huh. Yeah. Help me! <laughs> well, the only thing I could maybe think is that, you know, Teller was out in the audience, and at one point you see him holding a board for the woman to write her name really big, Karen. I mean, she could have just told him her name or whispered it to him, but instead they were writing it there really big on this board with a marker, and, you know, maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe Teller had some option to... Yeah. Maybe he was able to switch out her envelope without her realizing it? I don't know. It's just a guess. They didn't really show a lot of what Teller was doing, so we can only wonder. 
But anyways, I really like that concept. I like the whole, you know, everybody's in on it, except for this one guy on the phone, and then it ends up being a trick on everyone. That's just wonderful. That's just good magic. And it's a reminder why Penn and Teller are such great performers and magicians. So yeah, I loved it. What did you think? Leave a comment below. And now, it's time for Aesop's Fables story time. Here's a really small one, chapter 180, The Heifer and the Ox. <clears throat> A heifer went up to an ox, who was straining hard at the plow, and sympathized with him in a rather patronizing sort of way on the necessity of his having to work so hard. Not long afterwards, there was a festival in the village, and everyone kept holiday. But whereas the ox was turned loose into the pasture, the heifer was seized and led off to sacrifice. Ah, said the ox, with a grim smile, I see now why you were allowed to have such an idle time. It was because you were always intended for the altar. <laughs> Laughter was my own. So what can we learn from this ox with his grim smile and the heifer who is led to sacrifice? Well, you know, at first actually I thought they were gonna kill the heifer to have the meat to eat it for food for the festival, but this is an old story so maybe it really was for like a sacrifice, a blood ritual. Anyways, what can we, <laughs> what can we learn from that? So the heifer started off patronizing the ox who was working hard, sympathizing with him, but in a patronizing way about how hard he has to work. So the heifer was kind of like proud about not having to work and looking down on the ox. So that could be our learning lesson. Don't be too proud. Don't rub it into others because the situations can always be reversed. You may be on top one day, but the next day you could be on the bottom. If you were acting like a smug, patronizing heifer, no one's gonna be sorry when you meet your demise, when you're sacrificed for a festival. Best of us for the rest of us. Any Seinfeld fans out there? And I guess we can summarize that shortly as pride goeth before a fall. What about you? Do you have any other interpretations that I may have missed? Leave a comment below. And now it is 7.56 p.m. And I have to stop this video and run to the gym before it closes or they will not let me in. I've essentially got 15 minutes to get there. This, see this is the kind of really boring information I reward you with if you stick around to the end of the video. Clearly I'm incentivizing you all to stay through till the end. And what do you think about my random questions with you and me segment? I'm gonna read your comments, so leave those two at the bottom. All right, so it just occurred to me that I call this random questions with you and me, but I haven't answered any of them myself. So quickly, first question was if you have one word for the day, what would it be? My word would be excellence. Second question was, <laughs> would you rather look like a potato or feel like a potato? I think I would rather feel like a potato because who wants to look like a potato, am I right? And the third question was from this video, which was if you had a million dollars, what would you build and why? I would build a playground for adults. No children allowed. I'm sorry. Your children have enough playgrounds out there in the world. We need a cool, like, American Ninja Warrior type playground for adults only. I mean, maybe a little bit more safe than American Ninja Warrior, but something pretty fun for like physical activity and jumping around without worrying about a swarm of kids getting in the way. Again, no offense to the kids. That's just how I choose to spend my million dollars. And back to the video. That being said, I gots to get. So I hope you're having a wonderful week. Hope you're making it into the gym or whatever type of exercise you like to do. It's a great stress reliever. Increases endorphins. Highly recommended. I'll see you in the next video. Yep.